congregate. Good morning, church. I hope y'all had an awesome fourth. Y'all stand up and let's worship.
How many of you are happy for God's amazing grace? Have you personally experienced it? God, we thank you for your grace. I thank you for this song and how it ministers to us because we can reflect and thank you for your grace that you've given us. We're so grateful. We thank you that you saved us and that you have provided a way for us to have a relationship love you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. Hey, did the praise team bless you guys this morning? Great job, guys. Fantastic. Angie said she was so nervous she thought she might throw up. I just said, don't do it on stage, please. All right. So you guys can be seated. Thank you for being here this morning. Great crowd. Thank you for watching online. Did you guys have a good time? Independence Day yesterday. Did you have a good time? Eat some barbecue, shoot some fireworks, and just celebrate our nation, which is a very important time. And thank you for being here this morning, all right? So, hey, would you do me a favor, and would you just thank everybody that's watching us live online right now. Give them a big hand and thank them for tuning in. Thank you so much. And kids. Check out the screen. I believe you're going to enjoy this. Got some new adventures going on.
guys, it's Matt Price here. You know, I used to be a kid at the church at Bradford Road, just like you. Have you ever been double dog dared to do something? <laughs> I have. I had a buddy a long time ago and he double dog dared me to, well, that didn't turn out too well. I'd rather not get into it. But have you been double dog dared? Have you ever double dog dared someone else? Well, guess what? Welcome to the double dog dare challenge. I want to introduce y'all to someone, my buddy Daredevil. How you doing, Daredevil? Mm -hmm. This guy will do anything mm -hmm. if you double dog dare him to do it. So, oh, what's up? Were you trying to get into the splash pad? Ah, oh, that's right, you couldn't because they don't let dogs in the splash pad. <laughs> and Daredevil ain't never got no money. Well, I know what our first double dog dare challenge is. I dare you to sneak into the splash pad. So guys, you see, I double dog dare Daredevil to do something dumb, but I want to dare you to do something smart, and that's to obey God even when others don't. And that's this week's big idea. I dare you to obey God even when others don't. Miss Darcy mailed out your cards this week with your activities in it, and your challenge is this, is to do something hard this week, to obey God even when it's difficult. I double dog dare you. I had Matthew Price in Kids Church 20 years ago, and he was quite the daredevil himself. And boy, don't challenge Matthew to do something because he's going to do it. He does not walk away from a dare. And um, I think it's pretty cool now that he still has that same personality as he follows God. He is daring when it comes to sharing Jesus and discipling others to follow Jesus. And I just love that. And he will follow Jesus and he will obey God even when no one else is. And that's our big idea for this week is to follow God even when no one else does. And our Bible story is about someone who is famous for that. His name is Noah. Watch this. Stories of the Bible. Noah builds a boat. This is Noah. Hey! Noah was a good man who tried to do the right thing. Yeah! But in the time when Noah lived, he was the only man on earth who was doing the right thing. All the other people on earth were doing evil things and hurting each other. This made God very sad. So God said that he was going to send a flood to the earth that would destroy every living thing on earth because he was sorry he ever made them. But God decided to save Noah and his family. God told Noah to build a large boat. Okay. And told him exactly how to build the boat. All right, got it. Then God told Noah that he would cover the earth with a flood, but that Noah and his family would be safe. Oh, thank you. God told Noah to fill the boat with a pair of every kind of animal and bird. Hey, bird! And to bring enough food for his family and the animals. I've got it. So Noah did everything exactly as God commanded him. All right, all you. Come on. He filled the boat with a pair of every animal, bird, and small animal that scurries along the ground. Colored, bird, moth. Okay, all here. Then Noah, his family, and all the animals went into the boat, and then they waited for the flood to come. Okay, guys, so Noah followed God when no one else did. He obeyed God. Why do you think it was important that Noah obeyed God? 
what happened to all the other people? So sometimes when no one else is obeying God, remember Noah because you may want to do what Noah did because look how much better it turned out for Noah than it did for the other people. I just want to encourage you as you go into this week to remember to obey God even when no one else does. Let me pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, we know how much you love it when we obey you. And we know that when we obey you, our life is so much better. We have so much more peace and so much more comfort. And the Holy Spirit just leads us when we obey you. And we just ask that this week, all the kids at Bradford Road would do a great job in obeying you. Thank you for loving us, Father. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, guys, I do have one announcement. We have something really exciting coming up. Look at this. It's called Double Dog Dare Family Fun Night. And it's going to be on Friday night, July the 24th at 6 p.m. It's going to be fun. It's going to be messy. But it's going to be meaningful, too. But we only have so many seats because of, you know, social distancing. So, when you get your cards in the mail, which I hope you already have, look at that one and you need to register online, okay? You guys have a great week. Man, I'm intrigued by the messy part, right? Double dog dare. And of course, that's what they're attempting to do with you kids to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Let, let me ask you guys a question and see if we can just get to a point of agreement before I start with this morning's <coughs> sermon. And I, I prayed and prayed about <coughs> what to talk to you about. I, you know, every year when it comes around to July the 4th or Independence Day, I really want us to reflect on our nation and to be grateful for our heritage and who we are and for us not to lose our way. How many of you believes that the Bible is the best way to follow? If we do those things, we'll have a blessed nation. Do you agree with that? Let me see your hand. You, do you really believe that? That if we obey godly principles, biblical principles, that our nation will be blessed? One other question. How many of you believe that we are losing our way with that? Now, this morning, I don't want to be political. I don't want to be left or right. And I don't believe the best way to lead is in the middle. I, best, I believe the best leadership we have from the nation is looking up. It's above all of that. And for us to look to him and not look to anything when it comes to any of the political stuff, I believe we are losing our way because of that. I think that... Uh, Change will be made when we do it God's way. And when the God's house, when the word of God is preached and followed, and when we straighten out God's house and we get dedicated to live for him. And not just do it superficially, but to do it from our heart and really lead. Now these are challenging times. The most challenging times in our nation since I've been alive. I was really shaped by the Vietnam War, really shaped. I had several uncles to fight in it. Our family was really a military family. My dad or mom didn't serve in the military, but uncles and aunts, and we were always going to some kind of army or military base, and it, it really shaped me. It was a fearful time uh, for me. I've told this story before, but when I was 12, and when I grew up, you had a party line, telephone line. Anybody else here have a party line? And there was probably five or six people in our neighborhood on that line. And, and our great technology was a long cord where you could walk all around the, come on, give me an amen, at least one amen. And they weren't good old days. It would get all tangled up and twisted up. So, but that's what we had. One day phone rang. My mom's working outside. My brother, you know, was younger. Phone rang. And so I, you, you hurry up and get it, you know. Uh, and you can only talk for so long because your neighbor was going to say, Rodney, can you quit talking to your girlfriend? I need to call somebody. And uh, so they, they could hear everything you say, you know. And so I answered the phone, and it was our United States government telling me 
that they that I was supposed to report for duty I said I'm 12 and they said is your name Rodney Davis and I was like uh yes and I, I all I did was drop it and scream mama I thought they had you know got me I had to report and go in and it was another Rodney Davis in our neighborhood where I so and there was actually another Rodney Davis that lived in Slasham Valley believe it or not and and I, I was so glad because my uh, my uncle, one of my uncles, he's passed away now from Agent Orange. He had lost his limbs. He made an incredible sacrifice for our nation. I had twin uncles that served in the Army and had to go in and just had an aunt and un- other uncles uh, that fought. And uh, But through all of that fear or 9-11, this really makes me nervous it re- really makes me nervous because what destroys a nation is not having a foreign enemy it's not because we can come together on somebody foreign that fights us it's when we start fighting with each other it's when we can't when the church house can't come together and and we can't agree on standards and principles it's scary and it's a lot of unrest when we can all look at a situation and say it shouldn't have happened and it there's no way there has to be a solution and we can't come together but i'm going to give you something this morning and i asked some of you from my teaching on wednesday night i asked some of you to that watch wednesday nights and by the way watch wednesday nights this coming wednesday night we have a uh, a reflection on something that I'm teaching here but the following Wednesday night I'm going to be coming to you really live with nothing super prepared if you have questions I'm going to a- answer those questions if you come in on Facebook you can ask me questions right there so if nobody comes in on Facebook and talks to me I'm going to have a short lesson I'm going to have a night off all right but I want you to join me live and let's communicate because it's going to be casual we're just going to try some things to see how it works and just a way for me to minister to the congregation so I'm going to attempt it I've never done this technology my son Hunter tells me I can do it and and I I don't know when the children took over this world but they're taking over my world (laughs) because I don't know what's going on and uh, but I'm going to attempt it I hope that you will come in uh, to Facebook but in Deuteronomy chapter 8 is a very important chapter in the Bible it is where God gives Moses a message to tell the children of Israel after they've been wandering in the wilderness what to do when they come into their new nation and their new land. He gives them some instructions and he tells them what to do. And Really what he tells them to do is what we're doing with July the 4th and Independence Day. You set apart holidays in order to remember your past. You you, you put those in. It's like remembering a birthday. You know, always on my birthday, my parents would tell me things about me. On my birthday was my day, and we would reflect on me. Or their birthday is their day, and it was just this time to remember your existence. And Independence Day is America's birthday for us to remember our independence, who we are, so we don't forget and, and we have a tendency to forget. One day I heard this preacher uh, say it was an old preaching. And he was, he was saying one day people will say that the Holocaust didn't happen. And I was like, no way. So I typed in on Google, Internet, and there's this whole group of people that don't believe it existed. I was like, you need to go to the Holocaust you know, museum in Washington, D.C., it turned my stomach. And, they, and so people, if you don't remember, you forget. And so remember, it really, it's really important. And I'm going to show you at the end of today's talk why it's so important about remembering. Because God tells at the, through Moses at the end of Deuteronomy 8 why it's important to remember not forget your history don't forget who you are and 
is bad and is nasty and is ugly or is good or glamorous or whatever it is is what it is. And we have to remember what we have been free from and who we are. And, and he tells them, kind of in the middle of this cha chapter, be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. Don't forget. You, you have to remember. And, and in today's talk, I'm going to go ahead and give you the points. I cannot wait till I can give you a handout again so you can do the fill in the blanks. I miss it so bad because I could say right now in your handout, I've got three fill in the blanks, and here they are. Never forget the lessons learned. And that's what he's going to tell them in Deuteronomy chapter 8. Don't forget the lessons you learned out in the wilderness. Don't forget the dark times of your life or the difficult times of your life or the hardships in your life. When you forget those, you forget where, how you got where you are. Don't forget the lessons and the don't You know, we need to remember party lines and long cords. Let's, let's remember where we came from. Don't forget those things. Don't, don't forget about them. And, and so the lessons that you learn are the, the blessings experienced. Now, in these times, don't forget the blessings that you have experienced in life and, and, and the blessings that you have. I, I believe that we are at a pivotal point in American history that things will not ever be the same we're going to be looking back how things used to be, how church used to be, how life used to be. And we, we can't forget the blessings back there and right now that we experience. And I, I tell people, that this is the number one, if, you, if I'm your pastor, here's the number one thing I'll tell you if, you, if you think about it, because this is the message God's wanted me to tell you. I'll tell like the McGuire's, you're blessed, you're blessed. I'll tell you, Wyatt, look down that row. Got your kids sitting with you. You're blessed. You got two kids. That, when I was preaching to totally online, those are two teenagers that would send me texts and say, enjoyed the sermon. I guess your parents twisted your arm and made you watch them, but I thank you. I don't care how I get a thank you. I'll take it. I mean, I, I, I see that you guys got your row back. You're back, brother. Look at you. You're blessed. You're blessed, Cass. You know it, right? You're blessed. You are blessed. Look, I can't tell Posey that. He cries. <laughs> You're blessed. You are blessed. I've seen God take you through some storms. You're blessed, Larry. I remember when you first came here. Matter of fact, I started praying for you before I met you because Cassie asked me to. And God answered that prayer. We're blessed. We don't forget. We're blessed. We're blessed, Darcy. Look, don't forget. And th that's what July the 4th is. We're blessed. I know your baby's moving away, Trudy. You're blessed. You're blessed. And ever who pulled up with the who pulled up with the new side by side behind their truck this morning? Let me see your hand. Lane. Man, you blessed, bro, because that thing is awesome. <laughs> Will you give me a ride? <laughs> You're blessed. Diana back there says, I'm saving a whole row. You blessed, girl. You wanted old Baldy sitting beside you each week over there. You're blessed. I've seen you go through dark times. Blessings experienced. Don't forget about them. Don't forget about the blessings. And something else in Deuteronomy 8, he said, you haven't got this yet, but you have this future hope. There's, do you realize in your life there's things God sees about you that you can't see? He already knows them about you. And that's what Deuteronomy 8 is. I already know these things about you. I already know where I'm taking you. I already know what you're going to go through. I already know what's in your future. And I, I, I've prophesied that over you. Or I've told you it's, it's down the road. I'm, I'm going to take you to the other side. It's a future hope. It's a future hope. 
So I'm, I got to do a lot of reading, but God told me to do this. And uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, and you're going to have to read between the lines on some of this. I've already given you sermons, so if you want to leave, whatever. If you want to cut the, don't tune me out. Do not cut off watching online, right? So uh, I want to read Deuteronomy 8. You might have to read between the lines a little bit. So these lessons learned, here's the lessons learned. I'm going to read verses 1 and 2, then 5 and 6. Be careful to follow every command I'm giving you today so that you may live and increase. And I want you to get that. You truly live and you have increase when you do what God says. If you love me, keep my commands. And may enter and possess the land the Lord promised on, uh, on oath to your ancestors. So this, your, your, these lessons I've given, I've dealt with your ancestors and then you're going to go in because they all died out. And, and here's these lessons. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his command. In other words, I've been out having you out in the wilderness teaching you lessons. When we go through difficult times and hardships and we mess up and we do things the wrong way, and things happen to us and, and we, you know, we plant something and then we reap it and then we, you know, we, we just have these difficult times. God uses everything to teach us and to guide us and to humble us and to cause us to look to him. And we don't erase the bad things of what we've done. We learn from those so that we don't repeat them. When you erase them and you try to take them out of your history or take them out of who you are and what you've done, then you are going to repeat those things when you forget about history and you forget about the things you've done. And so you got to keep reminding yourself, I can't go there, I can't do that, that was bad behavior, I shouldn't have done that. But to do away with it uh, is, is a bad move. We learn from our history. We learn from the mistakes and what we've done. And we, all of these things that we went in the, done in the wilderness are for our remembrance and our learning and, and our humbling because when things are turned over to us, then we are surely going to mess up. Lessons learned. I, I think that you need to write down the lessons you've learned and make sure you give them to your kids. That's what God told them to do later on in Deuteronomy. Is you, you make sure that they understand uh, the lessons. I mean, when I spend time with my boys, I'm always telling them, or other kids. I told them yesterday we had kids over, and I, I'm telling them the, the lessons that I've learned, the things that I've appreciated. And, and you've got to tell them the lessons. It's not that they get a shortcut. It's they can go further if they'll learn their, the lessons you learned that took your life. If they learned them earlier, then God can take them further to do things in their life so they don't have to repeat and learn these lessons. How, how many of you, I mean, life would be way better off if you could st start it with this that much experience in the beginning, right? And not have those problems learn. Lessons learned. We need to know some lessons learned as a nation. Know them. Know them is what we need to do. Know them in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God. Walk in obedience to him and, and revering him. Amen? We learn those lessons. Blessings experienced. I love talking about this. And while they were in the wilderness, he humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna. He, 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 now, any way you cut it, manna is a pretty cool thing. You're hungry, walk outside, gather it up. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I can't imagine just not, we spend a lot of time worrying about what we're going to eat next. Anybody else? Dar said, what, what you want to eat tonight? I mean, you know, it's just always, you, you didn't worry about that then. They just provided, God just provided it every day which neither you nor your ancestors had known. You didn't know about this. 
to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The reason he provided wasn't to spoil them. It's for them to look to God and realize that no matter how they were fed or what happened to them in their lives, he was the ultimate provider. He was the source of blessing in their lives. He said, your clothes did not wear out. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. That new wife comes to you and says, I need a new outfit. Mm, looks as good as you bought it right there. You didn't, you didn't have to worry about a new outfit, right? They didn't wear out, and your feet did not swell. Woo! The older I get, the more that verse becomes meaningful to me. Amen? Your feet did not swell during these 40 years. Can you imagine just living with the blessings of God, food provided every day, your clothes didn't wear out, your feet didn't swell. In other words, it's a, it's a deeper meaning. You didn't experience the amount of fatigue that you would have normally experienced in traveling when I told you to move. You didn't have to worry about these things. It's the blessings of God. And we, we need to constantly reflect on the blessings of God. We are a blessed people. We are incredibly blessed. And then the future hope that they had. He says this to them. Verses 7 through 9, for the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills. How many of you like just sitting down beside water because it just feels like so much life? And he's telling you, I'm leading you to that land, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranate, olive oil and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing. A land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. I mean, a rich land. Do you realize that when, when we came here to North America, or to the Americas, and we were led here, most of us, from Europe and other places, and we come to this land and in Incredible, some of the richest land on planet earth and it was a blessing of God we are we are a blessed people because we live in a blessed land that God led us to and trying to experience religious freedom and getting our independence from uh, foreign soil that's governing us and we could become our own nation to come up with their own guidelines and our civil laws and 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 to have a blessed nation we are blessed people extremely blessed and then in verses 10 through 14 it says when you when you have eaten and are satisfied when I take you to that land here's why it's important to remember because you're going to one day eat and be satisfied you know the problem in America right we're satisfied we're spoiled we are pleasure addicts. We're satisfied. He says something. When you get there and you're satisfied and you're eating, you're sitting down by the stream and you got your feet in the water and you've, you've ate from that stream or you've ate the honey and, and you've got rich from the copper <laughs> that you've dug out of the rocks, then I want you to do something. I want you to praise me. I want you to praise me. I want you never to forget, and I, I, I think this is what God told me to do as I was studying and meditating this morning. I, I think we need to praise him for the land we live in in America, and I think we need to do it right now. I think we just need to praise him. I mean, we shot fireworks, and we, you know, we played, and we done stuff. We ate barbecue yesterday, but that wasn't praising him. I think we need to praise him for our nation and to thank him. Yes. Praise him at home. We just need to praise him. Thank you, God. Thank you for our nation. I'm going to praise him with a prayer. Father, thank you for the United States. I thank you that we have been a place that takes the huddle masses, that we can come from foreign lands all over the world and come to commonality and to... Uh, We've, we've opened up, and I think, once again, would you renew the spirit of America? Would you renew us? 
Would you revigorate us? Would you point us back to you and, and just be thankful to you for living in such an incredible nation? We love you, Father. We thank you for our founding fathers and for your leadership. And I pray once again that we would recognize the blessings that you have given us. In Jesus' name, amen. He says that he wants us to praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful, be careful, be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. Be careful. Failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I'm giving you this day. I, I think as a nation, we have to be careful because otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build the fine houses and settle down, well, I'm amazed when I look around. It wasn't this way when I was young. The houses are getting finer. I mean, we are li really living in some fine homes. You guys are living in some fine homes, and I'm glad for you. I, I'm glad uh, for you. And, and when, you're, when your herds and your flocks grow large and your silver and your gold increases and all you have is multiplied, th then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Wow. And we have surely increased and we don't need to forget. And, and, and here's what I... I, I wish that I could tell America this. Maybe I can if they watch online. Why is it so important to remember? Because the end of Deuteronomy chapter 8 tells us why. I want you guys to hear this. If you heard nothing else, the end of Deuteronomy chapter 8 is what I believe is happening to America. This is what he says. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, there is no other God but the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And when we go to other gods and we forget, this is what he says, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. I testify this. Like the nations uh, the Lord destroyed before you, so you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. Remember, it's really important. We got to remember as a nation where we came from, who we are, and how we've gotten so many blessings here. It is not because we had the most intelligent people. It is not just because of the opportunity. We have experienced God's blessings because we have been a Christian nation. Now we're turning to other gods, and God says, I testify, I give you a testimony, I give you a promise, I make a vow to you, is what he's saying. If you turn away from me, I'll destroy you. And there's other examples of when I've done that, and I can do it. And we're seeing how easily it is to be destroyed and have everything that we thought was so secure taken away. And this is just a bite-sized sample of what God can do. And listen to me. Turn back to God, America. Turn to his principles and turn back to biblical Judeo-Christian values. It's our only salvation. Greedy people will destroy America. We need to turn back to God and back to Jesus. You hear me? Please turn back to America. <laughs> Father, we repent. As a church, we repent of just being entertaining and not being serious about our faith. Father, as a, as a Bible leader, I repent for not carrying on the mission as I should. As a church and as a little group of believers in a small town, God, we, we just want to turn our hearts back to you. And we plead for America. We thank you for our independence. We thank you for the bounty that we've experienced. We thank you for the lessons we've learned and the humility that we face to realize it's you. But God, we have turned to other gods. Our nation has. Would you direct us, give us wisdom, show us what to do, and turn our hearts back towards you. 
And we pray this in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen. amen. Would you give the Lord another great big hand? I thank you for coming this morning to our guests. Thank you for being here. If you're a guest that's tuning in online, thank you so much. Would you share this? Would you just give us some feedback if you're watching online? Thank you uh, for doing that. And thank all of you guys for being here. I hope that you'll come back next week, 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. If we can do anything for you, you have any needs through this pandemic and what we're going through, please let us know. We love you. We love our church family. Go enjoy the rest of your Independence Day weekend and be grateful for America. Amen? You guys are dismissed. God bless you. Thank you for being here.